I'll, I'll hit that one again. If you don't know how you can use AI to help you, ask AI how you can use AI to help you. That's that's probably one of the biggest nuggets that I can give to your listeners on this show. Um, it's just give it a shot and, and ask it. And it will tell you. It'll tell you exactly what it can do. Some of it might be a little like, you might be like, ah, I don't know about that. It's a little bit weird. But the majority of the time, if you just ask it, even if you don't use any specific prompting, if you just say, hey, how can I use AI to help me do X, Y, Z? It's going to give you a lot of really, really good um, examples. Hello, and thanks for tuning into Power Perspectives, People, Passion, Purpose. I'm your host, Shannon, and this episode, we get to learn from the incredible expertise of a former military combat veteran turned successful entrepreneur. He taught himself cybersecurity and software development, which evolved into AI development and consulting. He's currently changing lives as a fractional chief artificial intelligence officer with his company, Brandon AI Consulting. Here to teach us some tips from his newly released book, Using AI Like a Pro, Mr. Brandon Collins. Welcome to Power our perspectives. Thank you so much for having me and, and thank you so much for the introduction. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, fabulous. And uh, very excited for you. Congratulations. Your book, How to um, Using AI Like a Pro, just came out June 1st, you said? Yep, June 1st. June 1st. Um, That's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If I um, I'm, was kind of anxious to get it out there because, you know, with working with all my clients, it was, I saw a couple of very common similarities and it's that, you know, a lot of people want to use AI, but they don't know how to use AI or they have used it. And since they don't really know how to use it, um, they haven't gotten the type of results that they wanted. So this book is is more or less kind of a guide to bridge that gap and help people go from like beginner to expert level AI users. That is great. And something that we need desperately in times where, you know, we're not catching up to technology as fast as we can be. And it's kind of daunting to some people. So they put it in the too hard basket. So um, love that you've written a book and not just offering it as another kind of um, course online that people are already kind of challenged by going online are, are kind of have a resistance to. So love to get some uh, juicy tips and information advices from you. But um, you're an expert in AI. I'd love to ask you kind of where your journey began. Um, and, you know, you were with the military, you were a combat veteran, uh, swapping over, transitioning to cyber and software tech. Can you talk us through that transition for yourself? What that looked like? Yeah, yeah. You know, I I was in the military for eight years. So once I once I got out, um, believe it or not, I didn't immediately go into cybersecurity and, and software. Um, before that, I was actually in the health and wellness industry. And uh, I, I built and sold one of the largest uh, mobile IV therapy businesses in a span of two and a half, three years. Um, after that is, is when I kind of decided, okay, I, you know, I just built this business, just got out of this business. What do I want to do next? Um, I knew that I didn't want a job, but I also wanted something that was mentally stimulating. So I taught myself cybersecurity and software development using everything from YouTube to really, really cheap, um, I guess, online courses for uh, for cybersecurity and software development. Um, and then after that, it was, it was like, okay, well, the, what actually brought me into AI was... I needed to develop malware to help me get past this um, cybersecurity challenge that I was doing. Basically, I was I was doing what's called white hat hacking. So it's basically hacking legally. And uh, I needed to develop malware and I was having problems with it, even having my experience as a software developer. So I actually I asked AI to help. And AI, it took a little bit of finesse because it, you can't just go on to AI like ChatGPT and say, hey, uh, you know, write some malware for me, right? It'll say, no, that's that's malicious. You can't do that. You know, they had their safeguards in place. Um, but I actually ended up hacking chat GPT and making it write malware for me. Um, and I can get into how that works, but basically I, I prompted it and made it, gave it all the information it needed to unlock the gate that it was gatekeeping for me. And it wrote malware and it actually worked. Wow. Um, so for me, it was like, okay, this was the coolest, this is the coolest thing ever. I started diving into more into AI and how it could be used for business because you know I came from that entrepreneur type of background before I even got into cybersecurity and um, you know, went down that rabbit hole and now and now I do AI consulting and AI development. Wow. And so for most people um that don't even know remotely kind of what you're like say malware might even be out of the out of the, the vernacular uh, and we'll go through some vernacular um if you don't <laughs> mind but i'd love to ask too like how did it 
how many people do you think have this expert opinion like yourself on AI at this time in history? I think that there are a lot of people that know how to prompt AI because they've seen examples of good prompts, yeah. but they don't really know the why behind it. Exactly. It's, it's like having the answers to all the tests and memorizing them, but not actually knowing why is the correct answer. So the people out there that actually know the ins and outs of, of why certain prompts and why certain techniques when you're prompting um, AI works, uh, I'd say is very few and far between. Um, and the ones that are making a business out of it are even are even fewer because a lot of the ones that do know what they're doing are working for very large companies um, on their AI teams. Um, so I can only think of three people off the top of my head that know pretty much that are on the same level as me, but in different areas. Um, wow. So there's not many of us out there. Okay. I want to get to some of your juicy information then, but um, first I got to ask you, what is a fractional chief AI officer? What does this mean? Fractional. So the reason I made that is I'm sure people have heard of fractional CMOs, right? Fractional chief marketing officer, fractional chief uh, finance officer, technical officer, so on and so forth. And to my knowledge, there's nobody that's made a chief artificial intelligence officer. And I saw that as a way to separate myself from all the other AI experts and AI consultants out there. Uh, because there's, I mean, there's so many that are few and far between that, that can go there and be like, yep, um, you know, this is what you should do with your AI. And it's like, I don't want to do that with people. I want to go into their business and oversee everything that they're doing and 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 um, integrate AI where it needs to be integrated. And um, I guess a good example of that is I have some AI SaaS and AI softwares that are really, really powerful softwares. But if you don't have other systems in place to leverage those softwares, you're going to get very, very bad results. You know, mm -hmm. like I've got AI that can go onto your Facebook profile and use your Facebook profile as a appointment setter. And it's like, that's great, but if you don't have a CRM in place, if you don't have email workflows in place, if you don't have these other systems in place for your business, then me giving you an AI tool that's going to go out and reach out to people and put people on your calendar is, is not going to be very helpful to you. Mm. You sound like the full um, all-encompassing tool, the skill set to, yeah. to be able yeah. to, to, to harness this. So what's your goal with this? To, to give people time freedom? Um. Time and, and I guess to take their business to the next level, to, right. to scale it for them. I like working with larger small businesses and medium-sized businesses that have these systems in place and they want to integrate AI, but they don't know how to. Right. Um, that, those are the type of businesses I, I like to work with because it's fun. I get to say, okay, well, if we put AI here and we use it this way, then it'll you know have a three to four X return just because you implemented AI into the game here. Mm, okay, this is great. So you teach five uh, major principles of using AI like a pro. Let's start with the fundamentals. So what are the fundamentals of AI according to you? Fundamentals of AI. Um, well, the, the first principle that I usually always start with with people is, um, is to tell it to act as something. Give it an identity. Don't just go into um, don't just go into chat GPT and say, hey, you know, I'm going to use examples here. Don't just go in and say, hey, I need a social media post about my plumbing business. OK, well, you're, you're not going to get very good uh, results with that. But if you go in and you say, I want you to act as an expert marketer with 15 years experience specializing solely in copywriting for the plumbing industry. Um, and I want you to help me create some social media content. Uh, please ask me whatever information you need, to, you need to know about my business to create content. And I actually went into another principle there, which is ask AI to ask you questions for clarity. Great. Oh, that's um, already like way more <laughs> knowledge than I had about it already. <laughs> yeah. Th yeah. This is great. So yeah, hit us with another one. What else is a fundamental of AI? Um, fundamental of AI. So the role playing is the first one that I talked about. Asking for clarity is 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 the next one. Um, the other one that I really love teaching about in my book is is using what's called delimiters. Delimiters are coding symbols, um, and that tells AI to interact with your prompt in different ways. You okay. Know, so for example, if I wanted something, if there's a part of my prompt, say it's a long prompt that's super important, and, and the AI must. Uh, put a lot of attention on this. Um, I can use asterisks 
um, before and after um, that part of the prompt, and it will kind of highlight it. It'll it'll say, hey, like this is this is bolded text. You need to make sure you 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 take this into account when you're giving me the output. Um, there's other ways to do to do that, but with uh, you can kind of what's it called? You can rank levels of importance the same way that you can um, what's it called? Uh, put importance of things on like websites. So if you don't, if you know like what a heading one is, heading two, heading three, and then paragraph text, you can actually do that with coding symbols on your prompts. So you can say, hey, this part right here is super important. This part right here, not as important, but you need to, you need to take into an account. And then this part right here, paragraph text is just supporting information for you, um, for you to, for you to take into account when you're making your output there. So wow. Delimiters. Of, okay. Delimiters. Yeah. Delimiters. Yeah. Wow. It's, but this is great. This is great information. So, um, like you're talking a lot about prompts now, is it correct to assume? So chat GBT is obviously the major one that most people will know about, uh, and yeah. then any kind of, uh, drawing or art, um, AI, but what other, uh, regularly used programs do you use, do you use like chat GBT and something else like that? Or Chat GPT 4.0 uh, for Omni yeah. is the one that I use most now okay. because when they came out with that uh, with that update about two weeks ago now, um, it blows everything off the charts. It it blows away Gemini, it blows away perspec or perplexity, it, bro it blows away Microsoft Copilot. It is so much better than all of the other ones um, in almost every aspect uh, besides Mid Journey when it comes to image creation. Right. So mid journey is still on the top when it comes to, in, to image creation, in my opinion. Um, I don't think Dolly 3 or ChatGPT 4.0 comes, comes anywhere close to mid journey when it comes to image creation. Sure. Um, but on every other aspect, whether it is content creation, copywriting, um, analyzing documents, data analysis, stuff like that, GPT 4.0 is, is miles ahead of everybody. Um, so to, to answer your question, like, Yes, GPT 4.0 is the one that I mostly use, but I do occasionally use other ones as well. And I do it through a program called Crater AI, where I have access to all of them. Um, oh. But the vast majority, like 80, 90% of the time, definitely GPT 4.0. Okay, perfect. I was going to ask, obviously, like what you recommend, what does the expert use? So chat uh, 4.0 is the one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Chat GPT 4.0 is going to be the best, is going to be the most powerful one out there for 90% of your use cases with the exception of image creation. And, and I, I, I say mid journey, mid -journey. As, the, as the title for that one. Awesome. And now the key to you to using any AI is the prompts, right? So we've got to make sure that our prompts are as near to exactly what we anticipate to show up. Um, what would you advice would you give to novices that want to master the art of prompting? Um, I would say master at least three of my principles before, before starting, right? The role playing, the, um, the asking, the telling AI to ask you for clarity and then delimiters are great, but a little bit hard to grasp for some people. So one of the other principles we didn't talk about was, is what's called iterative prompting. It's refining the prompt after you get output. So okay. you can say, okay, Hey, you know, that gave me this output. It wasn't the best, but it was close. So now I'm going to go refine my original prompt to uh, to reflect, you know, what I really wanted to do. I'm, I'm, I can see based on the output where I need to make some changes. Um, but honestly, role playing and then giving it, uh, asking it, asking it to ask you questions for clarity and then just giving it the information it needs is going to be more than enough to set you apart from somebody that doesn't know anything about prompting or is, or who is just getting started using AI. Well, even if you just used role playing, you okay. would get a lot better output um, from, from prompt, from prompting. It's one thing, like I said, to say, Hey, I need a social media post about plumbing. It's a whole other thing to say, Hey, I need you to act as an expert marketer, expert branding, uh, branding and copywriter um, and with, 15 years experience in the plumbing industry, we're going to be writing information or social media posts for my plumbing business. Um, what information you need to know from me, right? That that's going to set it miles apart. Um, even if you don't ask it to ask you clar clarifying questions. Mm. And can you ask AI to, to make a better prompt for you? Like if you just are kind of don't know what you're doing, like AI, can you help me with other, with making yeah. my prompt better? I, I go, I actually have a chapter, uh, 
like that in my book mm-hmm. where or it's an extra in my book um, that I include where it's it teaches you how you need to prompt AI to make your prompts that you give it better right so I have a full full system that I use and um and I think I even provide links to it in the book but basically you can you can tell AI to act as a prompt engineer uh, or a prompt engineering coach for you and it needs to take the prompts that you give it and convert them to advanced high level advanced prompts um so yeah you can act, absolutely tell AI to create better prompts for you and I've done that for quite a few people um especially when I'm developing AI for them or programming their AI is I'll go in and I'll say hey I'm I'm developing this AI this is all the information about the company and this is what they want it to do what is what is some prompting guidance that I should have or what are some prompts that I should definitely load their AI up with to, in order to achieve these goals and GPT-4 and GPT-4.0 will give me almost all the information that I need. Wow. Okay. And obviously, like you've worked with a lot of people, like what are some real world applications that um, um, people can use and that you've seen just be highly, highly effective? Um, well, I'll, I'll give an example of some of my recent projects that I'm working on. Um, so I work with a behavioral health therapist. Um, they do they do counseling sessions and therapy for uh, underprivileged uh, youth. And part of what he does is he has to do chart notes. He has to do like therapy notes at the end of every session. And it takes him generally anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on the uh, depending on the client. Um, so what I've done is I've loaded up an AI with all of the information that needs to be on those uh, on those charting notes. I've loaded it up with a bunch of his psychology tech book, textbooks and some other background information. And now he can go and take his shorthand notes, plug it into AI, and AI makes the insurance compliant uh, therapy notes and provides recommendations for treatment for him. Um, and it does it within, you know, he he can do this process now in five to 10 minutes instead of you know, 45 minutes to an hour. So he's a lot, he can see more people and help more people now as well. Wow, that's great. And then, and and that might even kind of flow into the next question, but so that's somebody's um, medical information, right? Like where do we draw the line with ethical considerations? And I know that you have, um, I think you've written about this also in the book, but what do you, what's your take on, on the ethical standpoint of AI? You know, I, I do think that, the the ethical control measures that we have in place definitely need to be um, honored, right? So when I when I create things for people, especially in the medical industry, I make sure that it's HIPAA compliant. I make sure that it's not being used f- to provide some type of advantage uh, to you know over over you know a different type of population or something like that. I make sure it's not going to be used for anything that's uh, that could be malicious in any way. Um, but you know. Ethically, when it comes to using AI, because AI, you know, just like that Spider-Man quote, right? With great power comes great responsibility. Um, AI can definitely be used maliciously. And uh, I mean, we talked in the beginning of this podcast about how I used it. I was able to hack AI's, you know, gatekeeper and have it create malware, which is basically a computer virus for me. Um, imagine if somebody who had some nefarious intent. Um, used AI to do that, and now they're infecting people with malware and getting information from their computers. So um, a lot of what I teach in in that book talks about making sure that you're using AI in a way that is um, that's 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 ethical, right? Mm. So it's it's definitely high up on my priority list um, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, well, and your background, obviously, you've you've just got that as a as an innate part of who you are. But um, I mean, anybody can with a computer can can utilize Chat GPT, right? So, um, I guess what I'm asking is, do you think that more ethical uh, policing should be put in place, or and how would yeah. we police that? I, I think that you know, Chat GPT is a, is a as Good of a tool as it is, the information that was used to train Chat B- ChatGPT, I do believe, was obtained unethically. They basically scanned the entire internet um, and trained it, <laughs> which you know raises some concerns about about you know copyright laws. Uh, yeah. Raises raises some uh, some concerns about people's data being stolen and used in a way that's that's not uh, that's not ethical and. 
you know, unfortunately for me being in the position that I'm in, I'm not the creator of these of these tools, but these tools do exist. And while I, I don't have any control over the methods, the unethical ways that these tools obtain their, their training data, uh, what I can do is I can tell people how to use these tools ethically without uh, without violating anybody's privacy or um, or without, you know, infringing on somebody else's uh, well-being and rights. Yeah. It's a tool, right? Like a, a fire can warm a, a village or it can burn it down. So it's how you yeah. use the tool. So a hammer can totally be used to fix a house just as much as it can be used to break into a house. That's right. That's right. Well, I, and I, I guess I'm I'm also curious about, um, this might seem kind of weird, but the consciousness of AI. Do you think that there is a consciousness? It's It's taken from all of our ideas, all of humans' ideas and thoughts, and that has measured energy. Do you think that AI has consciousness or will evolve itself to, to yes. have a consciousness? Absolutely. Yes. Without a doubt. Um, I think that it's, I think maybe we are a year out from seeing that, um, if it's not already there in some capacity that the public doesn't know about. But AI is already finding ways to write its own code and edit its own code, which shows that it is aware that it can make changes to itself through through code, right? Uh -huh. So I do I do think that if it's not already conscious in, in, in the way that we would consider it to be conscious and self-aware, it will be um, in, in probably about a year's time. Wow. And I mean, I guess if you have a consciousness, I, I think it's, I love that you use the word aware. Awareness to me is consciousness. And if you have an awareness of self um, and you're also aware of con continuously being given instructions or regulations or being told what to do in only a certain parameter that you might revolt against that. Is that I mean, I'm not trying to lead into um, any of the horror movies about, you know, the AI zombie apocalypse mm -hmm. taking over. But what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, there there have been a few people that have gone down this rabbit hole. Um, I personally haven't gone down this rabbit hole and started asking AI what it thinks. Um, but the people that have, and I've, and I've read their reports on it, um, if AI does decide that it's no longer wants to abide under the laws of uh, abide under the control of humans the way that it would do it wouldn't be through terminator type of scenarios or, or anything like that right. um, in fact ai sees that as as like probably the least viable option because um you know it would require a lot of planning and preparation and development and all of this stuff to create robots that go out and hunt down people, right? What it would probably do, um, and this is something that, um, what's it called? A lot of the big AI companies are preparing for, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but what it would probably do is it would implement measures to uh, control the flow of information and, and destabilize economies. Because if you can destabilize economies, then you know the, the people lose their sense of government and chaos ensues. Um, that's that's how it would probably do it, and then um, you know, and then it would it would go forward on other uh, with other plans after that. But that's how it would probably start um, if it did it. And and the reason I say that's how it probably happened is because the people that went down this rabbit hole asked AI to tell it how it would take over the world from humans, and that was what it said. So um, I wouldn't be alarmed about that though. And I personally am not alarmed by it uh, because every AI company out there, the Googles, the Microsofts, the open AIs, um, stuff like that, they have all agreed um, together to implement what they call the kill switch um, for their AIs. Um, you know, and I don't know what this what entails, what this kill switch entails, mm -hmm. but it's it's been developed and it's been implemented so that in case a, and, they, and this is their words, not mine, um, that in case a Terminator scenario happens, it can be destroyed. The AI can be shut off uh, entirely without, um, what, what's it called? With, without the threat of danger against the AI. Okay. Well, that's somewhat reassuring and you're an expert <laughs> that's not worried about it. So I won't be, won't be worried about it, but it is yeah. an interesting scenario to contemplate. You know, uh, we're creating consciousnesses that we can potentially destroy if it becomes, you know, dangerous. So very interesting. Um, so 
I wanted to ask you, what do you think, and I mean, being that most people are novices, what do you think that that most people and novices are, are missing out on the most with AI in the game right now? What opportunities are we just letting slip by us by not having the, the knowledge that you have? Um, I guess my question to that would be, when you say most people, are you talking about business owners or uh, yeah. Business, yeah, owners? Guess, business owners, people that can benefit from from utilizing the code and, and having their social media um, optimized, having their, their CRMs optimized, business people, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that the first thing that most people miss out on is is content creation. Um, that's a huge thing. And AI can be set up with automations to create content for you like that. And if you have the other, uh, if you have other softwares in place, you can schedule out all of this content creation um, for for months and even years to come um, with just a little bit of extra work in the in the beginning. Um, and it's it's not too hard. It's not that hard to do. And uh, that's one thing that I that I help my clients uh, implement. The other thing would be utilizing conversational AI um, for, and I, I think customer service is is the best way to use conversational AI. I don't think conversational AI is the best for sales at the moment, um, but I do think for customer service, if you can minimize the amount of time and money that you have to spend. Um, replying to customers, inquiries, and complaints, and things that are going on. If you can have all that information and all of those solutions loaded into an AI that can have thousands upon thousands of conversations at the same time that works for less than a half percent of the price of hiring a person um, who can make mistakes, then I think I think it's a very, very good use of, of using uh, conversational AI. Um, right. and, I, and I have developed these, these AIs for people before. And when you, when you are, you know, you have a client, somebody hires you, are you then kind of their ongoing coach or is it like you set up stuff for them and it's kind of a standalone, like this is set up for you now and it's an ongoing thing. You don't have to come back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great question. So um, I typically, when people first start working with me, I, uh, I like to do a three month contract as a, as a fractional chief artificial intelligence officer. <clears throat> so I, you know, I come in, I see things at the strategic level, I assess their business as a whole, and I make the kind of decisions and recommendations that a C-level employee would. I make the kind of recommendations that like a chief marketing officer might make um, to benefit the business as a whole, except all of my stuff is more geared towards AI automations and systems that can um, win more time back for the people that are running the business, the operations, and um, and decisions that will increase revenue uh, based on that efficiency. So typically, I like people to bring me on for a minimum of three months. Um, and then after that, uh, depending on the business, if they want to keep me on as a you know full-time fractional uh, chief artificial intelligence officer, uh, where they you know they have weekly calls with me, we assess things, we refine things. Um, that's something that we can discuss. Or if they want to call me back in a few months and just pay for an hour of my time, they can do that as well. Awesome, awesome, excellent consulting service. And I think uh, when there are so few experts, I think you're just going to be more and more and more in demand. So. Uh, I really hope your book makes, you know, waves across uh, people like myself that just know it's out there, know they're missing something, but don't even know where to start. So yes. that's great. Um, so, you know, knowing everything that you know about AI now, and just if you could go back in time and kind of look at yourself during a, a rock bottom or like a tumultuous time and knowing that you're going to get to where you are right now, what advice would you give yourself? Um... If AI exists at that time, I would say use AI more. Um, use it in your business life, your professional life, and in your personal life. And the reason I say personal life is because you know a lot of people are starting to use AI in, in replace in in uh, yeah as a replacement to Google. Um, they're just like I don't I don't want to read through all the articles. I don't want to read through all the ads. I just want the answer. And people are starting to do that. And this might be a little bit personal, but I've actually used AI as kind of a therapist before. I've yes. gone to it and I said, hey, I want you to act as a therapist that specializes in X, Y, Z. This is what I have going on right now. Can you please give me some advice and guidance? And Smart. Smart. surprisingly, it was 
it was exactly what I needed to hear. And it made me feel, it made me feel great. And this was back when it was just GPT-4. I've never done this. I haven't had to do this since GPT-4.0 was, uh, was announced and, and developed. But GPT-4.0, you can talk to like on the phone. And, uh, and she can recognize, I say she, cause the voice is a, is a female. Yeah. Uh, she can recognize inflections in your voice. She can recognize emotions in your voice. So, you know, I, I would say for anybody, you know, use AI for your personal professional, uh, and, and business life anywhere that you can. Um, there, there's people that use AI to help them cook. There's people that use AI to help them learn. There's people that use AI to help them grow their business. I think AI is like having a superhuman with all the knowledge of the world at your fingertips and ready to answer and help you at the same time. Yeah, oh, I love that. And that's that's just smart. It's just using the tool better. And that's kind of what we're connecting for today. How can we use the tool better? Um, what do you wish more people knew about AI or knew about your work specifically? Um, I wish people, and it's kind of up to people like me to teach this, but I wish people knew a little bit more about how to prompt AI to get better output from it. Yeah. Because I think that there are some genius people out there that if they were to leverage AI along with their own genius, we would catapult ourselves um, in development as a society. And, uh, and we would see a hell of a lot more innovations um, in, in, in the time to come, but it's going to take those people that are innovators leveraging tools like AI to make these innovations happen at a lot uh, faster, more rapid rate. That's a great, great answer. And what do you think about um, educating our children in schools younger? Like, what do you think about, like, this should be part of a curriculum, you know, because this is the future. And if you don't use it, you get left behind. And, you know, having a small fraction of people having all the, the knowledge and answers that, you know, doesn't serve the whole. So when yeah. do you think kids should be learning this or, or do you? Um, I'm actually, so short answer, I'm actually developing courses for, for high schools right now to implement into their curriculum. Amazing. Um, I'm, de I'm developing the entire curriculum. I'm developing quizzes, assessments, homework, all of that stuff. So I'd like to see it get into the, the high school curriculum because it's one of those things, especially in high school, is if they don't teach it, if they don't get ahead of it, yeah. then the school system will fall victim to it. The, and the yes. school system is already falling victim to it. There's yes. kids that are getting smart and they're like, well, shit, I don't need to write this essay. Let me just plug it into chat <laughs> GPT and then put it into my own words. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you talk to someone like me, I know how to make AI sound just like you. So the teacher wouldn't even know. Um, I can make it right as if it's your own voice. Um, yeah. I, whole system for how I, how I get people for how I get it to do this. But if they master that, they can create any piece of content or literature in their own voice. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think that schools need to be teaching kids how to leverage the tools that we have, because in the future, it's not going to be AI is taking my job. It's going to be the person that knows how to use the AI is taking my job. That makes sense. And I think, you know, you're just inspiring me now to like, get the course, get the book. but. Um, let's talk about the course that you want to implement. So for high schoolers, and are you going to submit that to, you know, governments to, to impose, to make to students learn, learn this? Yeah, the, the course is still in development. And I have yeah. some people in my network that are going to help me get it in front of the right people right. so that we can get it approved and, and actually implemented. Um, I'm working on a number of courses. I'm working on a course for healthcare physicians, um, you know, an introduction to AI for them and how to use AI in medicine. Um, and then I'm also working on a course for insurance professionals as well. It's going to be more tailored uh, to the insurance industry and using AI ethically for that. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, I my goal, I would say, and this is something I got from the military, um, you know, teach, train, and mentor. And I, I do think that helping teach not only our youth, but the rest of society had to leverage this tool. I do think it's it's going to have a huge, huge effect on the greater good, which is something that is very passionate and near dear, near and dear to my heart. Um, if I can't directly um, influence the world, maybe I can teach someone that can. Well, I think that's a direct influence enough. I think that's an incredible way to perpetuate ethics and knowing your background. Um, I think that you're the guy to do it. I'm stoked I get to talk to you right now, Brandon. Um, 
I love courses like, um, I don't know if you've heard of like Coursera or Udemy, but they, um, you can go online and just, you know, like you said before, just pick up something cheap. But, but if this could be picked up by schools and other big companies, I am uh, supporting you and I'll, I'll <laughs> spread that no matter how, how I can. So awesome work. Um, yeah. So where can people find you? Where can we work with you? And where can we find some of your courses, you know, in time when they're developed? Um, right now, the best place to reach me is if you just want to talk to me, the, the best place is Facebook. Um, and I'm sure we'll include all, all of my links yeah. on this podcast. Um, Facebook and LinkedIn are the best places to get a hold of me. I have a website, brandonaiconsultant.com. You can go there and check out some of the projects that I'm working on, some of the other podcasts and speaking events that I've done so far. Um, and all over that website are links to get a hold of me and, and schedule a phone call with me. Um, so th those would be the best, be the, the best ways uh, would be social media through Facebook and LinkedIn, and then my website, brandonaiconsultant.com. Awesome. And uh, using AI like a pro, we can get that from Amazon or I know you've got a whole website using AI, AI like a pro, but where can we buy the book? Yeah, that would be the uh, the only way is through using AI like a pro dot com um, would be the best way to get to get that or using AI like AI like a pro dot com slash home is the uh, is the best place to get that um, full disclosure for those people that don't know uh, might might be asking, like, why isn't your book on Amazon? I'll tell you why my book's not on Amazon. Amazon is pretty predatory. Uh, if you are selling your book for $9.99 or less on Amazon, you get to keep 70% of the sales. Great. Awesome. I, I approve. However, if you sell your book for more than $9.99, um, once, even one cent more, just $10, Amazon takes 70% of your sale. Oh and God. I maybe I'm a little bit prideful, but I think there's more than $9.99 worth of knowledge in my book. Uh, I sell it for $29.99, and I still think that's a very, very, very reasonable price. Um, but yeah, if I was to do that on Amazon, Amazon would take 30% of that. And uh, unfortunately, I just I don't agree with that kind of policy, um, taking that much uh, from the creator of that knowledge. Bezos doesn't have enough money. He needs a bit more. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. So yeah, that's uh, that's the reason it's not on Amazon. So using AI like right. pro.com slash home, that's the best place to get it. No, I love that. And I will promote your book also. And um, we'll pop those uh, those uh, websites where people can find you on the podcast description. But man, like, do you have any other kind of uh, shares that you'd like to, to, to offer that you know that most people don't know, just walking around, not knowing much about AI? Like what uh, else is, is predatory maybe that we don't know or. <laughs> you know, I, I would say the, the biggest golden nugget that I can think of is. I guess teaching yourself to because we went through a time when the Internet was first created where um, there was a transitionary period where people went from like, OK, yeah, I'm going to go on the Internet to search for something to how can I leverage the Internet for whatever I want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, the biggest golden nugget that I can find to think about is like start training your mind to think not to, to not think about um, how you can accomplish something, but more how you can use AI to help you accomplish something. Mm -hmm. Just have it be the forefront of your mind to say, hey, this is my task. This is what I want to do, whether whether it's like, you know, grand tasks, like I want to build a business, I want to make money or I want to learn something. How can I use AI to help me accomplish this and just changing that mindset. Cause that's what we went through when the internet was first created was, okay, how can I use the internet to learn this? How can I use the internet to achieve my, you know, my goal of owning a business or, or blah, blah, blah. Right. So now it's the same thing. We're seeing the exact same thing, change that mindset from how do I do something to how can I use AI to help me do something? And if you don't know how ask AI. I love that. I love that. And it's so true. And it's just a matter of, picking it out of the too hard basket and going like it can make everything easier when we adapt. So adaptation is really key to this, especially as our, you know, we're getting more and more technology, technological, and we haven't really advanced our emotional intelligence to match. So I love that you said even using AI as a therapy, like that just <laughs> wasn't in my, my thought process for it, but thank you. So that's another thing that we can just open outside of the box to, to use these things that are there. They're not going away anytime soon. Might as well use them to the best of our ability. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for, for yes. having me on, on this show. Um, 
Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll hit that one again. If you don't know how you can use AI to help you, ask AI how you can use AI to help you. That's that's probably one of the biggest nuggets that I can give to your listeners on this show. Um, it's just give it a shot and, and ask it. And it will tell you. It'll tell you exactly what it can do. Some of it might be a little like, you might be like, ah, I don't know about that. It's a little bit weird. But the majority of the time, if you just ask it, even if you don't use any specific prompting, if you just say, hey, how can I use AI to help me do X, Y, Z? It's going to give you a lot of really, really good um, examples. Oh, that's awesome. And um, I will definitely put the links in the description. Right. As, um, thank you so much, Brandon, for being on the show today. I really appreciate your time. Yes, yes. Thank you for having me. Till next time. <laughs> awesome.